Catholic TV Network welcomes and invites you to celebrate the sacred mysteries, listen to God's Word, and in the Holy Eucharist, proclaim the victory of Jesus over death until He comes in glory. Good morning. I, I'm Father Thomas Rafferty, and I'm the pastor of St. John the Evangelist Church in Canton. And during this Catholic school week, I'm delighted to have with me the fourth and eighth grades from St. John's School in Canton, Massachusetts, in the lovely Archdiocese of Boston, where the heating bills are low today, on this lovely warm day. And it is the feast of St. Blaise, bishop and martyr. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, the supplications your people make under the patronage of the martyr Saint Blaise, and grant that they may rejoice in peace in this present life and find help for life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, forgive the wrong I have done. Lord, forgive the wrong I have done. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. Lord, forgive the wrong I have done. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After entering a boat, Jesus made the crossing and came into his own town. And there, people brought to him a paralytic lying on a stretcher. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Courage, child, your sins are forgiven. At that, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. Jesus knew what they were thinking and said, Why do you harbor evil from the Lord Jesus Christ? Today, we're celebrating the feast day of St. Blaise. But the focus of our readings in the responsorial psalm that we heard today is the forgiveness of sins. In the first reading, we hear of God's mercy, and in Matthew's gospel, we hear of that mercy being put into practice. One week from today, we will celebrate Ash Wednesday, the start of Lent, and we call Lent a penitential season because we focus on our sin so that we can better appreciate the meaning and the fruit of Easter. In the gospel, Jesus tells a paralyzed man that his sins are forgiven. And he also cures him from his condition, saying, rise, pick up your stretcher, and go home. Now, in ancient times, many people thought that certain afflictions, such as blindness, paralysis, or leprosy, were punishments for sin. Do you remember in John chapter 9 when Jesus was asked if the afflicted were to blame for their condition or was it their parents' fault? And Jesus says, no, no, it's neither of those. And in fact, Jesus uses the term sin and the term illness. Excuse me, Jesus uses the term sickness and the term illness to describe sin. And he also uses those terms to describe and to condemn hardness of heart. The first reading comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah, and it begins, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Now, we know that to seek someone generally means to look for them, right? To search for them. So if we ask ourselves, well, where do we search for the Lord? The correct answer, of course, is everywhere, right? But the easiest places would be in the safest places, in the company of good people, in houses of worship in the company of people who do good works, right? Well, throughout the ages, heroic men and women, many of them we revere as saints, brought God to people and to places that were desperately in need of his presence. And the message that they sought to convey, the good news that they wanted to share with other people, <coughs> is what we're commemorating today, the forgiveness of sins. They wanted people to know, these brave missionaries, that God is merciful. In fact, God is more merciful than any human being can be. 
He's even more merciful than any of us human beings can imagine. That is why Isaiah tells us in today's first reading that God's ways are not our ways. We're human, and we can be slow to forgive. We can hold on to grudges. We can insist on punishment, especially if it's someone else being punished, right? But he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways. Our human condition, our limitation, can result in a hardness of heart that is just as corrosive as sin. And this is what Jesus encounters in the gospel story. In addition to Jesus and the man who was lying on the stretcher, there are two groups of people in today's gospel reading. One is the group of friends of the paralyzed man, right? They have brought him to Jesus on a stretcher. Wouldn't all of us like to have friends like that who would do that for us? And then there's another group, and they're the scribes. And what are we told about them? They question Jesus. Who is this man to be able to forgive sins? They're questioning Jesus' authority. Later on, they will criticize Jesus for curing people on the Sabbath. If someone has the chance to have sins forgiven, if someone who's crippled has the chance to walk, how can you criticize that person who gets cured or the one who cures them? It's only if you get hardness of heart, corrosiveness, corruption of your heart. And that's what happens to us if we can't forgive, if we don't have mercy. If we can't forgive others, how can we ask God to forgive us? How can we ask other people to forgive us when we do something wrong? Sadly, some people can become so hard of heart, so determined to hold on to their anger and their resentment, that they can't forgive others and they're even willing to forsake God's mercy. And not surprisingly, they end up lonely, and isolated, which only compounds the problem. That illness has a cure, however, and we heard the cure in the very first words of today's reading. Seek the Lord while he can be found. And that illness can be prevented, that illness of corrosiveness of heart, hardness of heart. Seek the Lord while he can be found. And when we accept that God way, God's ways are not our ways, but that we can see how much better they are and how much more merciful they are, then we will say, thank God. So let us now lift our hearts and present our prayers to the God of mercy. That during this jubilee year of mercy, the church will become more Christ-like each day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders and peoples of all nations work for peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have been blessed to enjoy good health, personal safety, and plentiful food always never turn a blind eye to needs of the sick, the hungry, and the weak. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the students, teachers, and staff of our school, and all the Catholic schools in America, may they grow in the knowledge and love of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parents and family members whose effort and sacrifice enable their children to attend Catholic schools, and for all our generous benefactors, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead rest in the peace of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, our hearts are grateful for all the gifts that you bestow upon us. With grateful hearts, we present these prayers to you 
In the name of your Son, Jesus, who is Christ, our Lord. Forgive our sins as we forgive. You taught us, Lord, to pray. But you alone can grant us grace to live the words we say. How can your pardon reach and bless the unforgiving heart? that broods on wrongs and will not let all bitterness depart. <coughs> Lord, cleanse the depths within our souls and bid resentment cease. Then bound to all in bonds of love, our lives will spread your peace. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice lift up your hearts. You lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and And everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Holy, 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 God of hosts, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed,
and entered willingly into his, willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving thanks broke it. The chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the power and glory of yours, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, 
worthy and you should have the word. And I'll just say the word. Jesus, Jesus, bread of life, Jesus, Jesus. Saving cup, Jesus, Jesus, live in us, we believe, O oh God, we believe. Come now to me, all who are thirsty, come and drink with faith in me. Jesus, Jesus, bread of life, Jesus, Jesus, Saving cup, Jesus, Jesus, live in us, we believe, O oh God, we believe. Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your blessed martyr blaze faithful in your service and victorious in suffering through Christ our Lord. Amen. And many of us are aware on this feast day there is a tradition of the blessing of throats. Through the intercession of St. Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, May the Lord protect you from illness of the throat and from every other disease. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And I'd like to thank Catholic TV for having us here today. And uh, all of you for being such great representatives of it's Watertown, Massachusetts, 02471. Or download our free app and watch us online at catholictv.com.